The ancient Near East was the home of early civilizations within a region roughly corresponding to the modern Middle East, Mesopotamia modern Iraq, southeast Turkey, southwest Iran, northeastern Syria and Kuwait, ancient Egypt, ancient Iran Elam, Media, Parthia and Persia, Anatolia, Asia Minor and Armenian Highlands Turkey's eastern Anatolia region, Armenia, northwestern Iran, southern Georgia, and western Azerbaijan, the Levant modern Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Israel, and Jordan, Cyprus Cyprus and the Arabian Peninsula. The ancient Near East is studied in the fields of Near Eastern archaeology and ancient history. The history of the ancient Near East begins with the rise of Sumer in the 4th millennium BC, though the date it ends varies. The term covers the Bronze Age and the Iron Age in the region, until either the conquest by the Achaemenid Empire in the 6th century BC, that by Macedonian Empire in the 4th century BC, or the Muslim conquests in the 7th century AD. The ancient Near East is considered one of the cradles of civilization. It was here that intensive year-round agriculture was first practiced, leading to the rise of the first dense urban settlements and the development of many familiar institutions of civilization, such as social stratification, centralized government and empires, organized religion and organized warfare. It also saw the creation of the first writing system and law codes, early advances that laid the foundations of astronomy and mathematics, and the invention of the wheel. During the period, states became increasingly large, until the region became controlled by militaristic empires that had conquered a number of different cultures. <laughs> Concept of Near East The phrase, ancient Near East utilizes the 19th-century distinction between Near East and Far East as global regions of interest to the British Empire. The distinction began during the Crimean War. The last major exclusive partition of the East between these two terms was current in diplomacy in the late 19th century, with the Hamidian massacres of the Armenians and Assyrians by the Ottoman Empire in 1894–1896 and the Sino-Japanese War of 1894–1895. The two theatres were described by the statesmen and advisers of the British Empire as the Near East and the Far East. Shortly after, they were to share the stage with Middle East, which came to prevail in the 20th century and continues in modern times. As Near East had meant the lands of the Ottoman Empire at roughly its maximum extent, on the fall of that empire, the use of Near East in diplomacy was reduced significantly in favour of the Middle East. Meanwhile, the ancient Near East had become distinct. The Ottoman rule over the Near East ranged from Vienna to the north to the tip of the Arabian Peninsula to the south, from Egypt in the west to the borders of Iraq in the east. The 19th century archaeologists added Iran to their definition, which was never under the Ottomans, but they excluded all of Europe and generally Egypt, which had parts in the empire. Topic: <inaudible> Periodization. <inaudible> Ancient Near East periodization is the attempt to categorize or divide time into discrete named blocks, or eras, of the Near East. The result is a descriptive abstraction that provides a useful handle on Near East periods of time with relatively stable characteristics. History Prehistory Paleolithic Epipaleolithic and Mesolithic Kebran culture Natufian culture founding of Gobekli Tepe ceremonial site Pre-Pottery Neolithic A Pre-Pottery Neolithic B Pre-Pottery Neolithic C Pottery Neolithic Topic Chalcolithic Topic Early Mesopotamia The Uruk period c. 4, to 3100 BC existed from the protohistoric Chalcolithic to the Early Bronze Age period in the history of Mesopotamia, following the Ubaid period. Named after the Sumerian city of Uruk, this period saw the emergence of urban life in Mesopotamia. It was followed by the Sumerian civilization. The late Uruk period 34 to 32 centuries saw the gradual emergence of the cuneiform script and corresponds to the Early Bronze Age. Bronze Age Early Bronze Age 
Topic: <laughs> Sumer and Akkad. Sumer, located in southern Mesopotamia, is the earliest known civilization in the world. It lasted from the first settlement of Eridu in the Ubaid period late 6th millennium BC through the Uruk period 4th millennium BC and the dynastic periods 3rd millennium BC until the rise of Assyria and Babylon in the late 3rd millennium BC and early 2nd millennium BC respectively. The Akkadian Empire, founded by Sargon the Great, lasted from the 24th to the 21st century BC, and was regarded by many as the world's first empire. The Akkadians eventually fragmented into Assyria and Babylonia. Elam Ancient Elam lay to the east of Sumer and Akkad, in the far west and southwest of modern-day Iran, stretching from the lowlands of Khuzestan and Ilam province. In the Old Elamite period, c. 3200 BC, it consisted of kingdoms on the Iranian plateau, centered on Anshan, and from the mid-2nd millennium BC, it was centered on Susa in the Khuzestan lowlands. Elam was absorbed into the Assyrian Empire in the 9th to 7th centuries BC, however, the civilization endured up until 539 BC when it was finally overrun by the Iranian Persians. The Proto-Elamite civilization existed from c. 3200 BC to 2700 BC, when Susa, the later capital of the Elamites, began to receive influence from the cultures of the Iranian plateau. In archaeological terms, this corresponds to the late Banesh period. This civilization is recognized as the oldest in Iran and was largely contemporary with its neighbor, the Sumerian civilization. The Proto-Elamite script is an early Bronze Age writing system briefly in use for the ancient Elamite language which was a language isolate before the introduction of Elamite cuneiform. The Amorites The Amorites were a nomadic Semitic people who occupied the country west of the Euphrates from the second half of the 3rd millennium BC. In the earliest Sumerian sources, beginning about 2400 BC, the land of the Amorites, the Mar -tu land, is associated with the West, including Syria and Canaan, although their ultimate origin may have been Arabia. They ultimately settled in Mesopotamia, ruling Isin, Larsa, and later Babylon. Topic: <laughs> Middle Bronze Age. Assyria, after enduring a short period of Mitanni domination, emerged as a great power from the accession of Ashur Ubalit I in 1365 BC to the death of Tiglath Pileser I in 1076 BC. Assyria rivaled Egypt during this period, and dominated much of the Near East. Babylonia, founded as a state by Amorite tribes, found itself under the rule of Kassites for 435 years. The nation stagnated during the Kassite period, and Babylonia often found itself under Assyrian or Elamite domination. Canaan, Ugarit, Kadesh, Megiddo, Kingdom of Israel The Hittite Empire was founded some time after 2000 BC, and existed as a major power, dominating Asia Minor and the Levant until 1200 BC, when it was first overrun by the Phrygians, and then appropriated by Assyria. Late Bronze Age. The Hurrians lived in northern Mesopotamia and areas to the immediate east and west, beginning approximately 2500 BC. They probably originated in the Caucasus and entered from the north, but this is not certain. Their known homeland was centered on Subartu, the Khabar River valley, and later they established themselves as rulers of small kingdoms throughout northern Mesopotamia and Syria. The largest and most influential Hurrian nation was the Kingdom of Mitanni. The Hurrians played a substantial part in the history of the Hittites. Ishua was an ancient kingdom in Anatolia. The name is first attested in the 2nd millennium BC, and is also spelled Izua. In the Classical period, the land was a part of Armenia. Ishua was one of the places where agriculture developed very early on in the Neolithic. Urban centers emerged in the upper Euphrates River valley around 3500 BC. The first states followed in the 3rd millennium BC. The name Ishua is not known until the literate period of the 2nd millennium BC. Few literate sources from within Ishua have been discovered and the primary source material comes from Hittite texts. To the west of Ishua lay the kingdom of the Hittites, and this nation was an untrustworthy neighbor. 
The Hittite king Hattusili I c. 1600 BC is reported to have marched his army across the Euphrates River and destroyed the cities there. This corresponds well with burnt destruction layers discovered by archaeologists at town sites in Ishua of roughly the same date. After the end of the Hittite Empire in the early 12th century BC a new state emerged in Ishua. The city of Malatya became the centre of one of the so-called Neo-Hittite kingdom. The movement of nomadic people may have weakened the kingdom of Malatya before the final Assyrian invasion. The decline of the settlements and culture in Ishua from the 7th century BC until the Roman period was probably caused by this movement of people. The Armenians later settled in the area since they were natives of the Armenian plateau and related to the earlier inhabitants of Ishua. Kizuwatna is the name of an ancient kingdom of the 2nd millennium BC. It was situated in the highlands of southeastern Anatolia, near the Gulf of Iskenderun in modern-day Turkey. It encircled the Taurus Mountains and the Sahan River. The center of the kingdom was the city of Kumani, situated in the highlands. In a later era, the same region was known as Cilicia. Luwian is an extinct language of the Anatolian branch of the Indo-European language family. Luwian speakers gradually spread through Anatolia and became a contributing factor to the downfall, after c. 1180 BC, of the Hittite Empire, where it was already widely spoken. Luwian was also the language spoken in the Neo-Hittite states of Syria, such as Melid and Carchemish, as well as in the central Anatolian kingdom of Tabal that flourished around 900 BC. Luwian has been preserved in two forms, named after the writing systems used to represent them, cuneiform Luwian, and hieroglyphic Luwian. Mari was an ancient Sumerian and Amorite city, located 11 km northwest of the modern town of Abu Kamal on the western bank of Euphrates River, some 120 km southeast of Deir ez Zor, Syria. It is thought to have been inhabited since the 5th millennium BC, although it flourished from 2900 BC until 1759 BC, when it was sacked by Hammurabi. Mitanni was a Hurrian kingdom in northern Mesopotamia from c. 1500 BC, at the height of its power, during the 14th century BC, encompassing what is today southeastern Turkey, northern Syria and northern Iraq roughly corresponding to Kurdistan, centered on the capital Washakani whose precise location has not yet been determined by archaeologists. The Mitanni kingdom is thought to have been a feudal state led by a warrior nobility of Indo-Aryan descent, who invaded the Levant region at some point during the 17th century BC, their influence apparent in a linguistic superstratum in Mitanni records. The spread to Syria of a distinct pottery type associated with the Kura Araxes culture has been connected with this movement, although its date is somewhat too early. Yamhad was an ancient Amorite kingdom. A substantial Hurrian population also settled in the kingdom, and the Hurrian culture influenced the area. The kingdom was powerful during the Middle Bronze Age, c. 1800–1600 BC. Its biggest rival was Katna further south. Yamhad was finally destroyed by the Hittites in the 16th century BC. The Aramaeans were a Semitic, West Semitic language group, semi-nomadic and pastoralist people who had lived in Upper Mesopotamia and Syria. Aramaeans have never had a unified empire, they were divided into independent kingdoms all across the Near East. Yet to these Aramaeans befell the privilege of imposing their language and culture upon the entire Near East and beyond, fostered in part by the mass relocations enacted by successive empires, including the Assyrians and Babylonians. Scholars even have used the term Aramization for the Assyro Babylonian peoples' languages and cultures, that have become Aramaic speaking. The Sea Peoples is the term used for a confederacy of seafaring raiders of the 2nd millennium BC who sailed into the eastern shores of the Mediterranean, caused political unrest, and attempted to enter or control Egyptian territory during the late 19th dynasty, and especially during year 8 of Ramesses III of the 20th dynasty. The Egyptian pharaoh Merneptah explicitly refers to them by the term, the foreign countries or peoples of the sea, in his great Karnak inscription. Although some scholars believe that they invaded Cyprus, Hatti, and the Levant, this hypothesis is disputed. <laughs> Bronze Age collapse the Bronze Age collapse is the name given by those historians who see the transition from the Late Bronze Age to the Early Iron Age as violent, sudden and culturally disruptive, expressed by the collapse of palace economies of the Aegean and Anatolia, which were replaced after a hiatus by the isolated village cultures of the Dark Age period in history of the ancient Middle East. 
Some have gone so far as to call the catalyst that ended the Bronze Age a catastrophe. The Bronze Age collapse may be seen in the context of a technological history that saw the slow, comparatively continuous spread of iron working technology in the region, beginning with precocious iron working in what is now Romania in the 13th and 12th centuries. The cultural collapse of the Mycenaean kingdoms, the Hittite Empire in Anatolia and Syria, and the Egyptian Empire in Syria and Israel, the scission of long distance trade contacts and sudden eclipse of literacy occurred between 1206 and 1150 BC. In the first phase of this period, almost every city between Troy and Gaza was violently destroyed, and often left unoccupied thereafter for example, Hattusis, Mycenae, Ugarit. The gradual end of the Dark Age that ensued saw the rise of settled Neo-Hittite and Aramean kingdoms of the mid-10th century BC, and the rise of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Iron Age During the early Iron Age, from 911 BC, the Neo-Assyrian Empire arose, vying with Babylonia and other lesser powers for dominance of the region, though not until the reforms of Tiglath-Pileser III in the 8th century BC, did it become a powerful and vast empire. In the Middle Assyrian period of the Late Bronze Age, Assyria had been a kingdom of northern Mesopotamia modern-day northern Iraq, competing for dominance with its southern Mesopotamian rival Babylonia. From 1365 to 1076 it had been a major imperial power, rivaling Egypt and the Hittite Empire. Beginning with the campaign of Adad-Nirari II, it became a vast empire, overthrowing 25th dynasty Egypt and conquering Egypt, the Middle East, and large swaths of Asia Minor, ancient Iran, the Caucasus and East Mediterranean. The Neo-Assyrian Empire succeeded the Middle Assyrian period 14th to 10th century BC. Some scholars, such as Richard Nelson Fry, regard the Neo-Assyrian Empire to be the first real empire in human history. During this period, Aramaic was also made an official language of the empire. Alongside the Akkadian language, the states of the Neo-Hittite kingdoms were Luwian, Aramaic, and Phoenician-speaking political entities of Iron Age northern Syria and southern Anatolia that arose following the collapse of the Hittite Empire around 1180 BC and lasted until roughly 700 BC. The term. Neo Hittite is sometimes reserved specifically for the Luwian speaking principalities like Melad and Karkemish, although in a wider sense the broader cultural term, Syro Hittite, is now applied to all the entities that arose in south central Anatolia following the Hittite collapse, such as Tabal and Kuwait, as well as those of northern and coastal Syria. Urartu was an ancient kingdom of Armenia and North Mesopotamia which existed from c. 860 BC, emerging from the Late Bronze Age until 585 BC. The Kingdom of Urartu was located in the mountainous plateau between Asia Minor, the Iranian Plateau, Mesopotamia, and the Caucasus Mountains, later known as the Armenian Highland, and it centered on Lake Van present-day eastern Turkey. The name corresponds to the biblical Ararat. The term Neo-Babylonian Empire refers to Babylonia under the rule of the 11th Chaldean. Dynasty, from the revolt of Nabopolassar in 623 BC until the invasion of Cyrus the Great in 539 BC, although the last ruler of Babylonia Nabonidus was in fact from the Assyrian city of Haran and not Chaldean, notably including the reign of Nebuchadrezzar II. Through the centuries of Assyrian domination, Babylonia enjoyed a prominent status, and revolted at the slightest indication that it did not. However, the Assyrians always managed to restore Babylonian loyalty, whether through the granting of increased privileges, or militarily. That finally changed in 627 BC with the death of the last strong Assyrian ruler, Ashurbanipal, and Babylonia rebelled under Nabopolassar the Chaldean a few years later. In alliance with the Medes and Scythians, Nineveh was sacked in 612 and Haran in 608 BC, and the seat of empire was again transferred to Babylonia. Subsequently, the Medes controlled much of the ancient Near East from their base in Ikbatana modern-day Hamadan, Iran, most notably most of what is now Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and the South Caucasus. Following the fall of the Medes, the Achaemenid Empire was the first of the Persian empires to rule over most of the Near East and far beyond, and the second great Iranian Empire after the Median Empire. At the height of its power, encompassing approximately 7.5 million square kilometers, the Achaemenid Empire was territorially the largest empire of classical antiquity, and the first world empire. 
It spanned three continents Europe, Asia, and Africa, including apart from its core in modern-day Iran, the territories of modern Iraq, the Caucasus Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Dagestan, Abkhazia, Asia Minor Turkey, Thrace, Bulgaria, Greece, many of the Black Sea coastal regions, northern Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, Lebanon, Syria, Afghanistan, Central Asia, parts of Pakistan, and all significant population centers of ancient Egypt as far west as Libya. It is noted in Western history as the foe of the Greek city-states in the Greco-Persian Wars, for freeing the Israelites from their Babylonian captivity, and for instituting Aramaic as the empire's official language. Topic religions Ancient civilizations in the Near East were deeply influenced by their spiritual beliefs, which generally did not distinguish between heaven and earth. They believed that divine action influenced all mundane matters, and also believed in divination ability to predict the future. Omens were often inscribed in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, as were records of major events. Topic see also Ancient Near East Portal Ancient Near East Studies Ancient History Cities of the Ancient Near East Economy of Urartu History of Mesopotamia History of Pottery in the Southern Levant List of Museums of Ancient Near Eastern Art Topic References Topic Further reading Fletcher, Bannister, Cruikshank, Dan, Sir Bannister Fletcher's A History of Architecture, Architectural Press, 20th edition, 1996 first published 1896. ISBN 0-7506-2267-9. CF, Part 1, Chapter 4. William W. Hello and William Kelly Simpson, The Ancient Near East, A History, Holt Reinhardt and Winston Publishers, 2nd edition, 1997. ISBN 0-15-503819-2. Jack Sasson, The Civilizations of the Ancient Near East, New York, 1995 Mark Van de Meerup. History of the Ancient Near East, ca. 3000 323 BC, Blackwell Publishers, Second Edition, 2006, first published 2003. ISBN 1 4051 4911 6. Pittman, Holly. Art of the Bronze Age, Southeastern Iran, Western Central Asia, and the Indus Valley. New York, The Metropolitan Museum of Art. ISBN 9780870993657. External links The History of the Ancient Near East, a database of the prehistoric Near East as well as its ancient history up to approximately the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, Vicino Oriente. Vicino Oriente is the journal of the section Near East of the Department of Historical, Archaeological and Anthropological Sciences of Antiquity of Rome La Sapienza University. The journal, which is published yearly, deals with Near Eastern history, archaeology, epigraphy, extending its view also on the whole Mediterranean with the study of Phoenician and Punic documents. It is accompanied by Quaderni di Vicino Oriente, a monograph series. Ancient Near East.net, an information and content portal for the archaeology, ancient history, and culture of the ancient Near East and Egypt Freer Gallery of Art, Smithsonian Institution The Freer Gallery houses a famous collection of ancient Near Eastern artifacts and records, notebooks and photographs of excavations in Samara Iraq, Persepolis and Pasargadae Iran, The Freer Gallery of Art and Arthur M. Sackler Gallery Archives The archives for the Freer Gallery of Art and Arthur M. Sackler Gallery houses the papers of Ernst Hurst Hersfeld regarding his many excavations, along with records of other archaeological excavations in the ancient Near East. Archaeowiki.org — a wiki for the research and documentation of the ancient Near East in Egypt. Atana — website hosted by a consortium of universities in the interests of providing digitized resources and relevant web links. Ancient Near East Photographs This collection, created by Professor Scott Nogle, documents artifacts and archaeological sites of the Ancient Near East, from the University of Washington Library's Digital Image Collection Near East Images A directory of archaeological images of the Ancient Near East Bioarchaeology of the Near East An open access journal <laughs>